Hello there, brothers and sisters. God bless each and every single one of you. It's Hunter's Point here with another video. I hope you all having a good morning so far. I know I am. You know, yesterday was pretty good, and so far this morning I'm doing all right. So I thank you all as always for your prayers, and I would uh, please I would ask that you please continue to keep me in prayer for joy, peace, wisdom, and health and comfort in the name of Jesus Christ. You all know I would greatly appreciate and covet your prayers. I have a lot of you on my prayer list, so I'm praying for you guys every night. Um, you know, and if I'm led on the spot, I'll you know, pray for you right then and there. I really do care for each of you. I mean, seriously, this this feels like a family, and I just, I love that so much. I mean, I will say without a doubt that this channel has provided me with the best source of fellowship I've had in my entire life, right? Because I really haven't gone to church all that much growing up, and I mean, it turns out it's a good thing because a lot of my local churches do not preach the correct gospel, and it's very, very sad. It's very sad, but, you know, doing this whole online ministry thing, it's provided me with a real source of fellowship, and I, I absolutely love that. So thank you all again for all the, you know, positivity, all the respect, uh, everything that you've shown me uh, over the course of this channel, and uh, I hope I've been able to do an okay job at trying to give that back to you guys. So thank you for that. Thank you for your prayers, and, and thank you for all the positive and kind feedback that you've given me over the past year plus, all right? So I'm um, here to present you all with an update. I'm still, like, in the process of waking up. I literally just got up, like, 26 minutes ago as of the time of me recording this. So uh, if I yawn a couple times through this, I apologize in advance. I'm still, like half asleep. So we'll see how this goes. I know I wanted to come on here this morning and, and deliver some kind of update, right? Because it's been roughly four days since my last compact world news update. And of course, there's so much that has happened between then and now. I, I feel like I need to give you all some kind of update, right? So I have three articles to go over off of endtimeheadlines.org. Again, I'm like still in the process of waking up, so please bear with me. Uh, give me some patience as I'm reading these articles. And uh, you know what? We'll just go ahead and get started, all right? So this is your world news update for the 14th of October, 2020. Let's start with the first article here. China hands out $1.5 million in digital currency in one of the country's largest public tests to advance a cashless society. This is pretty big if you ask me. China has just launched one of the largest real-world trials for its digital currency, pushing closer towards creating a cashless society. In the latest report, the government in Shenzhen performed a lottery to give away a total of 10 million yuan, roughly about $1.5 million in, in U.S. currency, worth of the digital currency that they've created. A shocking number of nearly 2 million people have reportedly applied, and 50,000 people have actually won. The winners of this lottery can now download a digital renminbi, that's, I guess, one of the digital currencies in China, to receive the digital yuan, which is the main currency, the main physical currency in China, and spend it at over 3,000 merchants in a particular district of Shenzhen. This location is said to be China's technology hub and home to some of the country's largest tech giants, including Huawei and Tencent. The report stated that local supermarkets and pharmacies are included among the participating merchants, as well as Walmart. This is all happening as China has been pushing towards a cashless society for some time now. And the digital yuan is not a cryptocurrency like we know Bitcoin to be here in the States. Instead, it is issued and controlled by the People's Bank of China, the country's central bank. According to CNBC, quote, it is not looking to replace digital wallets like uh, Allpay or WeChat Pay. It will likely work together with them and not other banks. China isn't alone in these endeavors as central banks around the world are reportedly exploring the idea of issuing digital currencies. The Bank for International Settlements and seven central banks recently, recently published a framework for central bank digital currencies, or CBC or CBDCs. Excuse me. See, I told you, I'm still in the process of waking up. So that is the situation in China. They've issued a digital currency, a digital renminbi, which is based off of their physical currency of the yuan, and it's being controlled by their bank, the People's Bank of China, and this is pushing the country uh, closer than ever before to a digitalized currency. And I'm telling you right now, this reeks of Mark of the Beast. Right, because it starts with stuff like this, and it's going to expand, where it's not just China that's going to be doing this. This is going to be country after country soon. You're practically going to have the entire world worshipping the idea of a digital currency. 
one that the nations can still control. This way, when the tribulation period arrives and one man, the Antichrist, is in charge of the whole world, he'll be able to be in charge of all of these world currencies and merge them under the mark. I'm telling you, I can see this coming a mile away, and I know the majority of you watching me can see the exact same thing. Right? It starts with things like this, and it ends with the mark of the beast halfway through the tribulation period. Now we know as the church, as the believers, that we will not be here for that. We will not be here when things get really bad. They're bad now, they're going to get worse. All right, We will not be here for the mark. All right, So relax, you can calm down a little bit. We are not appointed to wrath. A lot of people like to say that wrath is only the last three and a half years. No. right? The wrath of God, his wrath's being poured out throughout the entire seven year period. All right, you have your seal judgments, trumpet judgments, and bowl judgments, antichrist system, being led with the false prophet, the mark of the beast, widespread famine. It's not just the last three and a half years that are bad, right? The whole thing is bad, right? And do you, do you really think that Christ is going to allow his bride to get beat up before he snatches her? No. All right, so do not worry, all right, do not listen to those who try to say that we're already in the tribulation period because we're not, and don't listen to those who try to say that we have to go three and a half years into the tribulation because they're wrong, all right? It's a secondary issue. It's not a fellowship breaker, but they're still wrong, right? They're still scripturally inaccurate, all right? So you don't have to worry about, about having to go into the tribulation period because we don't, all right? Second article, China, once again, we're talking about China, forces churches to replace crosses with five-pointed stars. This upsets me, man. Warns that Christianity, quote, does not belong here. Uh, of course, the persecution is continuing to rise in China. Uh, I feel it's getting worse by the day, and reports like this are only confirming my suspicion there. A new report from Bitter Winter is stating that the Chinese Communist Party officials have ordered dozens of churches in China to replace crosses with the five-pointed star. That, of course, is the symbol that is featured on the country's flag to represent the CCP, the CCP, the Chinese Communist Party, and its role in the nation. The report highlights that back in August, the two Chinese Christian councils in a county administered by the prefecture-level uh, city of Zhejiang in the Zhangji province ordered more than 70 affiliated churches to immediately remove the cross from their official seals and to erect the five-pointed star, which is used in all other state-run institutions in its place. This follows a recent demand that churches remove Chinese characters for, uh, for Christianity from church seals. That's very, very sad. Uh, quote, all official churches were ordered to replace their seals so that believers accept the party as the main leader and follow only it, uh, a three-self church venue director from Zhejiang said. The cross is the symbol of our faith, and that's why it's been inscribed in these churches' seals, another three-self venue dictator said or director said, excuse me. Uh, the government replaces it with the five-pointed star to show its power. These latest orders are all part of President Xi Jinping's ongoing religious... Uh, I'm not even going to try to pronounce that. He's, it's essentially a religious crackdown policy, which requires Christianity and other religions to fully embrace socialism and the leadership of the CCP. According to the Christian Post, back in July, the government of Langlings County, uh, Dan Hongzun, uh, administered by the prefecture-level city of Linyi in the Shandong province, reportedly removed crosses from numerous state-approved three self-church venues, along with other religious symbols and slogans now also being removed from the buildings. Uh, during the demolition, one of the town officials told onlookers that crosses must be removed from all churches because Christianity does not belong in China. That's where we're at now. That's our world. I told you it's bad. And it's only getting worse, but especially for our brothers and sisters in China and in India and a lot of those countries over there in the Middle East and in that East Asian area where being a Christian is a lot more dangerous than, say, being a Christian here. Right? It's, it's getting really bad over there, so please pray for all of our brothers and sisters. Uh, things are getting out of, out of hand. Right? Very, very out of hand. It, it's sad. It's sad, but this is where we're at now. This is our world in 2020, and uh, unfortunately, it's going to get much, much worse. All right, so third article, the United Nations continues to strongly promote abortion all over the globe. This actually sickens me quite a bit. Various elements of the United Nations system, including the World Health Organization, UNICEF, 
uh, UNFPA and the World Bank will partner with abortion groups to create a human right to abortion. That's what they call it. The UN made the announcement on September 29th to commemorate so-called International Safe Abortion Day with the stated goal of addressing, quote, unsafe abortion in the context of the COVID-19 pandemic. The partnership, headed by the World Health Organization Department of Sexual and Reproductive Health and Research, will bring together UN entities and the world's largest abortion providers, including the International Planned Parenthood Federation, IPOS, and Marie Stokes International, to promote a comprehensive abortion care, including access to self-administered telemedicine abortion as an essential service and a human right. I use that word, that term, rather very loosely. Uh, by, col by collaborating on mitigation strategies to reduce disruption in abortion process, in addition to procedurement and funding for abortion services, the goal of the partnership is for big abortion in the UN to make abortion available and accessible on demand everywhere. The announcement goes so far as to highlight not only young girls, but also, quote, those with varying gender identities. Again, this is the world we live in, ladies and gentlemen. This is how things are now. As people who should be able to receive abortion care. Those are the various people groups that they think should be able to have access to abortion. Once again, welcome to 2020. Uh, j just as soon as you think it can't get any weirder, you keep, you keep seeing stuff like that. This is the world that we live in. All right, so if you have not believed on Christ, I would implore you to do so right now because tomorrow's not guaranteed, right? The rapture is imminent. It can happen at any time. It could happen tonight for all we know, right? So it's, that's why it's so important that if you have not believed on Christ, that you believe on Christ right now. I'm actually going to read you all the gospel, of course, as I always try to do. 1 Corinthians chapter 15, verse 1 through 4. This is the gospel that saves, all right? Moreover, brethren, I declare unto you the gospel which I preached unto you, which also ye have received, and wherein ye stand, by which also ye are saved, if ye keep in memory what I preached unto you, unless ye have believed in vain. For I delivered unto you, first of all, that which I also received, how that Christ died for our sins, according to the Scriptures, and that he was buried, and that he rose again the third day, according to the Scriptures. That's the gospel that saves. Right, that Jesus died on the cross, shedding his precious blood for the remission of all mankind's sin, past, present, future. He was buried in the tomb three days, proving he was dead. He received a traditional Jewish burial. And he rose again the third day, according to the scriptures. Why? For our justification. We are saved, we are justified by faith alone in the finished redemptive work of Jesus Christ alone. All right, There's no amount of good works that we could ever do that would get our way into the kingdom of heaven. Right? Heaven cannot be bought, earned, or worked towards. Heaven comes with salvation. Salvation is a one-time, instantaneous event, a free gift given to all those who have believed the gospel of Jesus Christ in their hearts alone. All right, I'm going to read Ephesians chapter 2, verse 8 and 9, a couple of my go-to verses here. For by grace are you saved through faith, and that not of yourselves, it is the gift of God, not of works, lest any man should boast. It all comes back around to your belief in Christ alone. All right, It's not a gift if you have to work for it. It's not a gift if you can lose it either. And it's not a gift if it's 50% works, 50% grace. All right? Gospel of Jesus Christ is very, very clear. And the scriptures are very, very clear as to how we're saved. And that's by our belief in Christ alone. All right? It all comes back around to belief. John chapter 3, and we'll read verse 16 through 18. I'm sorry if I'm not the most uh, enthusiastic. Again, I'm still, like, trying to wake up. I'm still <laughs> fully trying to get my bearings straight here. So let's go ahead and read John 3, 16 through 18. For God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten Son, that whosoever believeth in him should not perish but have everlasting life. For God sent not a son into the world to condemn the world, but that the world through him might be saved. He that believeth on him is not condemned, but he that believeth not is condemned already, because he hath not believed in the name of the only begotten Son of God. Right? It's so, so simple getting saved, I'm telling you. John chapter 5, verse 24. Verily, verily, I say unto you, he that heareth my word and believeth on him that sent me hath everlasting life, and shall not come into condemnation, but is passed from death unto life. Let's read John chapter 6, verse 40. And this is the will of him that sent me, that everyone which seeth the Son and believeth on him may have everlasting life, and I will raise him up at the last day. John 6, 47. Verily, verily, I say unto you, he that believeth on me hath everlasting life. Uh, it's so simple, right? Getting saved is so, so childlike simple. Just believe on Christ. If you believe that what Jesus did on the cross at Calvary was all sufficient and it paid the sin debt, for all of your sins, past, present, future, you're saved. 
All right, there's nothing more you need to do on top of that. Just believe that what Christ did on the cross at Calvary was enough. All right, because if you're trusting at all in your own works, you're not going to make it. All right, you need to trust fully in Christ alone. Then you will make it. And at that point, once you're saved, you can never lose your salvation for any reason, right? So don't listen to anyone who tries to tell you that eternal security is a lie. Because it's not. The scriptures make it very clear that we have eternal security, that we are eternally secure the nanosecond we believe the gospel. All right, so that is where we're at. That is the uh, news update. I wanted to present you all with that, as well as the gospel, as always. Uh, still kind of tired, so I think I'm going to try to get some caffeine in my system, try to wake up a little bit. But wanted to come on here this morning and give you all uh, some kind of update. So uh, I hope this was sufficient. I do plan on uh, doing more news updates as news comes out. So, uh, you know, just keep keep an eye out, keep an ear out on everything going on in the world. And, uh uh, I will be on if anything groundbreaking occurs. Um, I do plan on doing an update regardless tomorrow, but we'll see. Don't hold me to that. It'll kind of just depend on things going on uh, in my life as well as things going on in the world. So, uh, yeah. With that being said, I'll see you guys in the next video, should the Lord tarry. Otherwise, God bless.